Happy November 1st. Welcome back to another vlog. I am Alexia Nicole. And we're out here in these real estate streets, y'all. So, what is going on? What's going on? Final touches on getting um, Brittany closed this week, making sure that the title company and lender are balancing their CDs. Um, still waiting for the sellers to sign the extended extension for closing date and financing um, for Jasmine's house. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch the previous month's real estate vlogs. They just kind of continue because this is just how it goes in real estate. It, it just it just be flowing from day to day. Hello, it's November 2nd. Um, and now with Brittany, we are still waiting on the actual clear to close, which is stressing me out a little bit here. Her lender just sent an update. Underwriting, credit, and income have been approved. Working on the clear to close. It says the appraisal was ordered today, but that must, that must, he must not have updated that because we've been past that stage of life. Um, and everything else, title is received, survey is received, insurance complete, initial CD approved. And then with Jasmine, it's, we're just waiting really for the appraisal report to come in. The appraisal was done today. As long as she is credit approved and finance approved by the 4th, we're good. We can still wait for the appraisal to come in. And at whatever point that the appraisal actually comes in, if it is under value, then we still have the opportunity to negotiate. But as long as credit and income are approved, um, then we're good with her buying her um, third party financing addendum. Um, and the closing for Jasmine is supposed to be on the 12th, which would be next week. Today's the 10th. Oh, today's the 2nd. So in 10 days, whatever that is, y'all. I talked to Antonio earlier today, trying to um, gauge and see if, you know, he's still trying to get in the house before the end of the year. And he says he'll be out here the end of November, hopefully. And I'm, I'm feeling like we're going to more so go... Um, we're going to more so go uh, resale with him because, um, you know, unless a lot of the new construction homes that I've been seeing, you know, in his price point that fits his needs, um, they're all currently being built in inventory and won't really have anything available to close before the end of the year unless, you know, something, somebody backs out and something pops back up on the market. Um, so resale is probably what I'm thinking, but I just need him to get here. So that's that, y'all. Um, okay, I've been at the house all day. My um, customer relations management system that I use, my CRM, this is more so for if you're a realtor and you're watching this. I use um, Chime CRM, right? And it's one of the best, I would say, top three CRM systems to use. Um, depending on like what type of brokerage you're with, some brokers offer CRM, some don't, some have like big brokers like KW, Remax or whatever, they have their own like CRM systems that they use. So my brokerage, I've been here, what going on two years, I think now, um, they hadn't offered a CRM. Like, I think I've talked about this in other videos, like my brokerage is just very transactional. You know, they don't really give a lot of support, you know, all of that. I, I don't necessarily need it because I have more mentor mommy and daddy. So I'm good there. But I started using Chime CRM earlier this year. And Chime was a pretty penny each month. $500. $500 a month for Chime. Um, but it simplified so much of my my business life like it just helped you know crm it just helps you stay organized with your your customer management you know like all of that because it's just me so everything go like as soon as i have a buyer consultation or a seller consultation whatever everything goes into the crm all notes all dates everything goes in there anyways whatever so i've been paying a pretty penny 
$500 a month for this CRM. My brokerage, Champions Real Estate Group, is now offering this same CRM. They've decided to step it up a notch, y'all. They are offering this same CRM to everybody at the brokerage for... <laughs> Every time I think about this, I just want to shout. <laughs> uh, they are offering this same CRM for $105 a year. <laughs> uh, do y'all know? Do the math. You do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> uh, so... I'm saying all of this to say that I have just switched over from my individual account to my brokerage account, but that means that I I'm, I now have to go into the system and transfer a lot. Like on the back end, they're able to do a lot, but there's also still a lot that they can't do. Um, so that's like, it's where my website is based out of, all my automatic emails, all like everything all like everything is out of there right the only thing i don't i don't actually do on there is write um contracts like it doesn't have that portion but everything else all communication all reminders everything if you go to alexianicole.com that is that is where that is based from right so i have to transfer a lot of stuff so that's probably going to be a task for me um um Probably Monday, because the next two days, tomorrow we do the final walkthrough for Brittany, and then I just kind of have like a lot of, you know, I got to get my hair done, got to get my nails done, my finger, my nail is broken. Um, you know, I, I have that day tomorrow where I just take care of me. And um, then Friday is closing, and something else I have to do. Good morning, good morning. Today is Wednesday, November 3rd. Um, I just put together Brittany's... Um, closing gift basket and I want to show it to y'all because I keep saying I'm gonna show y'all the other ones in the other videos and I always forget so here so we go. this is it got a nice little throw blanket it says this is us I'm addicted to Ray Dunn stuff and I just go to home goods and then like I, I go crazy on their stuff so this little throw blanket then there's these glasses that say yours and then this one says mine so for her and her hubby and then these are just like little hand towels, also by Ray Dunn, the glasses, these little hand towels, one says home, one says love. This pillow, I always like to just throw in a pillow. Usually they have some that say home or just kind of something like that, but it's the holiday season, so it's not a lot of those available. It's like Christmas galore everywhere. So I found this one, it says the stars, <clears throat> it says the stars at night are big and bright with a Texas um, state on there. Of course, the bottle of Black Girl Magic Sparkling because I just love that. Um, a candle that says home, that's also by Ray Dunn. Usually they have the black ones, but because it's Christmas season, holiday season coming up, everything is like Christmas colored. I also like to always do a coffee table book and this one is like a decor book, a really popular one. I actually uh, have that one here. Then I just like to find little fun things. This is a silicone ice ball maker. So as y'all can see, it'll just make a big ball of ice. Um, and then this is clearly an aerator for wine. Um, a Nest Mini. And then this is a picture frame by Ray Dunn as well. Um, and that's it for this closing basket. Yay. Oh, and I forgot to show y'all the actual basket itself. So all the baskets I usually put them in are like repurposable. So this one says firewood. Their house does have a fireplace. So, you know, if they want to put logs in there, they can. Or they can just turn this thing around and it'll still be cute to do whatever they want with it. All right, y'all, we are out the house. Ooh. Let's go do this walkthrough. Hopefully everything looks great. Although the house isn't going to be empty more than likely because remember we did the lease back on this property. So the owners of the home are going, well, the sellers of the home are going to be leasing back the property until 
the 14th <laughs> till the 14th so 10 days today's the we'll, we'll be closing tomorrow on the 4th um and then they um we did a lease back for the 10 days and I can't I think I don't remember we charged them like 235 to like about two and a half $250 ish 240 something like that we did the math and then I already told y'all how that worked out so yeah so we're just going just to make sure that you know everything looks the way that it looked when we first saw the home and that you know all of the agreed upon repairs um, have been done and all of that there wasn't really anything cosmetically that we had agreed to be done so everything was just um, you know well there was a few things and that's why I bring my iPad with me because I can't remember everything off the top of my head like who could who, who, who could anyways let's go do this walkthrough y'all oh and then also today is the day before Jasmine's buyer financing approval needs to be sent um and I have not heard from her lender. Y'all know, I tell y'all all the time, all lenders are not created equal. Brittany's lender is very great. Ugh, and I didn't even know him. Um, that was not a preferred lender of mine. She found him from wherever, but Cameron has been amazing. Um, text messages, calls, you know, just always keeping me in the loop, which I should always be in the loop. Because sometimes, you know, they like, the, the thing here is, right, Although like you talk to your lender or at least the processor and all of their whole team, kind of just as much as you talk to your realtor, you still don't really create that bond because for most people, they get to actually see me and interact with me and create like a, a personal a personal bond, you know, to whatever degree with the lender. It's just very business minded. So when they need things and they have questions, you know, the buyers are not always as comfortable talking to them as they would be to me. So if they need something or something is going on, if they keep me in the loop, it's a lot easier for me to reach out to my client and say, hey, you know, they really need this. This is the importance of this. You know, because sometimes some people drag their feet, not saying any of my current clients are, but you know, it happens. People drag their feet or they don't really realize the importance of what the lender is asking or they're not fully open um, with the information that they need, you know, just etc. So when you create that relationship between the, the lender and the realtor, it just makes everything flow better. So I'm saying this to say, y'all know I get long-winded, that Brittany's lender has been really amazing. He sends weekly updates to everybody in the transaction, the seller side title, me, um, and the buyer, of course, which keeps, you know, everybody like at bay. So they're not constantly calling and saying, okay, what's going on with this? And what's going on with this? Now, Jasmine's lender, <laughs> I can't say that he's a bad lender. He, he just doesn't have communication, you know, definitely not with me. Like I've called him maybe three times throughout this transaction and he's just been real dry. Like I'm bothering him. And, um, you know, Jasmine mentioned maybe a few times where she called and um, he may not have been just like, you know, available. And of course, nobody can answer the phone 24-7. Of course, you have other clients. So you do take all those things into consideration. But when we're sending emails and we're leaving voice messages and, you know, all that stuff, and you're just not even being responsive to that. And then when I do get you on the phone, you try. Mm, I don't know, know bro. I don't know. And it makes me sad because... Both of these are black men, you know, like I would love to move forward and work with them and um, with other transactions, but Cameron, yeah, you, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. So my whole point of even bringing him up is that I'm going to have Valerie, my transaction coordinator, which I'm sure she's probably already on top of it. I'm sure it's on her list of things to do today because that's just how mom Valerie is. But it's on my mind, so I'm going to call her and have her um, reach out to him or send him an email so we can get an update because I haven't heard anything about buyer approval yet. And um, I need to know. I need to know. 
are, is she, is she, is her financing approved? Yes or no? Ooh. See, you and Salem can just be out here enjoying life. Yeah, this is a good size yard. <laughs> Silly. So yeah, there was a padlock on this that was supposed to be taken off. And yeah, so, okay. They removed that. All right, final walkthrough. Home sweet home, almost there. Okay, so we just did the final walkthrough for Brittany. Everything is everything. Um, but we did just hear back from her lender that they're hoping to get the clear to close tomorrow which is the day we're supposed to be closing so we're gonna go ahead and extend closing one day till friday just in, in just to be on the safe side which i really don't want to do but if we have to then you know that's just that's just what has to get done but um yeah other than that everything's still okay just have to have to close by friday because the sellers are closing on their new house on monday so they need to this one needs to be sold <laughs> this one needs to be done so they can buy their new house i've been telling y'all this whole transaction here has just been a trickle effect a three-party trickle effect so people it's november 4th today is supposed to be closing day but we're not closing <laughs> um still after Brittany submitted the documents yesterday that they asked for um now they're asking for more stuff you know this is just a part of underwriting i say this all the time you know like there's nothing that i can do we just have to wait until they feel like they have everything they need um which is just annoying it's just annoying when it comes down to like the last minute um so we went ahead and did extension for closing tomorrow and hopefully um and then hopefully we'll get the clear to close and it'll all be good if it goes into Monday, that's going to be unfortunate because the sellers really, they need to close on their house on Monday. So, yeah. Life be life. <laughs> Closings don't be closing. Uh, lenders be lendering. Ugh. Jasmine's lender this morning. I had to step out of character for a quick second. I called the man, bro. <laughs> Because you you're not just gonna be you you are not going to be lying to me on the phone, bruh. Who do you think you're talking to? So he claimed that everybody, all parties involved, knew that the le the loan had been approved, and I'm just like, you never said that, never. Jasmine didn't know. Our transaction coordinator didn't know. And he had the nerve to tell me he told me that on the phone last week. And I said, no, you didn't. You didn't. Because if you did, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have been so concerned. Like, if nobody knows why, nobody knows. Your communication has been trash. Trash. Um, but anyways, so Jasmine actually got her closing disclosures last night which is good um all we're waiting on now is the appraisal to come in so that's that hopefully we'll get that i'm praying early next week monday tuesday of next week um because she's gonna be doing a mobile closing um next week is when i think uh Wednesday is when they planned on sending out the documents to have the mobile murder 
um, sign and do everything and get them back by Friday. I guess there's some holiday next week. I don't really know. Um, so yeah, let's hope the appraisal comes in at value and we'll be good to go on that tip. I'm about to go get me some lunch. It's 1.30 in the day and all I've had is some tea today. I need some food because I'm just feeling like I have a bit of a headache and it might be because I'm hungry and just the day is daying. <laughs> That's all. Well, well, well. We have got the clear to close for Brittany. Literally like 4.59 p.m. <laughs> so I'm going to call title first thing in the morning and get it scheduled. Oh, Jesus. And then guess what? <laughs> As I'm driving, minding my business, business it's six o'clock. Ken calls. Ken, the lender, <laughs> with the nonsense, to give me an update about the appraisal that I told him was going to be late and we needed to extend. And he asked me why I was wanting to extend. I mean, <laughs> it's just hello. I'm not crazy. And then, oh y'all, oh, this one, this, this one really, he really did it. You were telling me stories, fibs. My mom used to tell me, don't say lies, it's not nice, don't call people liars. You was telling me fibs and stories about you was communicating and doing blah, 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 blah. And now, after I gave you a little nice, nasty read this morning, now you want to communicate. So I guess it's just, he's just now coming to the realization that we just did this appraisal on Tuesday. It's not supposed to be back until the 11th. We close on the 12th. That's not enough time. And you telling the sellers that we don't need an extension? Bruh. Yes, we do. But, but no. No. You so caught up in just not wanting to acknowledge what is going on around here that you want to seem like you communicating to being Mr. Perfect. You're not. Ugh. Anyways, so it really made me happy when my phone rang and I saw his unsaved number. I said, oh, what does Ken want? Uh, we want we want to really communicate now. That's what we want to do. I appreciate it though. Do 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 what needs to be done in the, for the best interest of our client. Let's get it done. <laughs> Day. And he had all the thank yous and I appreciate the business and da 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 da, -da. All, all of that in this conversation. Oh, you got your act right now. <laughs> Y'all. So, um, this, well, now look. He said he's going to call the appraisal company and see if they can put a rush on the appraisal. Um, and then, you know, if not, then we may have to extend. Literally ask me, um, you, you don't want to extend it? I called you last week and asked you this same exact question. Literally asked this man the same exact question. And he asked me, well, why would you want to do that? Hello? <laughs> Y'all, it's November 5th, it's Friday, 1.31 p.m. Still, still waiting for title to schedule closing for Brittany today before 5 p.m. <laughs> it like they had to send one more document, then they had to do the title commitment. So at two o'clock, if I don't hear nothing from them, I'm calling. Like this, the, and it's not title's fault. It's it's the lender, the processing team that just. Condition after condition after condition. It's nobody's fault, but it's just all annoying. Like, no, nobody moves at a fast pace. Like, I want them to. <laughs> but realistically, they're they're all working. You know, they just, they're working simultaneously on multiple files. I get it, but I need this closed. And then, Mr. Lender calls. Well, actually... Jasmine called me this morning and said, or texted me and said, hey, we might have a problem. So now here we are with a real issue of a condition that they're not able to meet. 
so that is going to make the loan bust there's no way around this condition it will take um a minimum of three months student loans y'all student loans so um the client jasmine she's the only one on the loan um her husband is not but because they have a fha loan they are still looking at the husband's finances as of right now his um student loans are in default so that means that they will need to be um, consolidated and taken out of default there is no rushing this process i have dealt with this multiple times with multiple clients when it comes to student loans um, normally i guess with conventional loans um not i guess with conventional loans it wouldn't be taken into consideration because the husband is not on the loan it's this loan is based off of jasmine's income and her credit profile but because it's fha and i tell you all the time fha and all their guidelines um it is causing it is causing for this condition to be taken care of before underwriting will fully approve us so i just spoke with her lender this ribbon cash program that i meant to tell you all about with britney but we actually didn't end up using it for britney might be able to save us with jasmine's loan so what ribbon cash is i feel like i kind of went over this with y'all a little bit um but ribbon cash get buying parent home but we we back your buyer to win cash offers ribbon da, 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 da. basically what ribbon does is especially in a case like we have right now um, I've already uploaded Jasmine's pre-approval letter, submitted the house. Now I'm just waiting for them. Look, actually, I just got the email that says, Ribbon is ready for your client. Um, I haven't even called Jasmine since. Okay, buying power is good. Okay, they accepted her buying power. Okay, 368000 Home is only two sixty five. So now I'm waiting for them to tell me what they value the home at, if they'll go for that price point of the 265 and what they'll be charging monthly for rent. So Ribbon basically will pay cash for the house, allow Jasmine to still move in, live there. She'll be paying them rent and then they give her six months to be able to finance the property and buy it back from Ribbon at the same price. So the only thing she really truly pays is, of course, there's a ribbon fee um, at closing. Um, there's there's a fee in that that will be that will take care of ribbon, um, and then you know she's basically going to be renting the home until she can get her finances and you know her husband's student loans figured out to where she can actually close on this property um god dog <sighs> oh okay y'all that's where we at that's that's it everything is literally down to the wire right now i've cried fake tears just emotional <laughs> Because that's just how I feel about everything, real estate right now, everything. Talk to Brittany's lender again. Somebody went to lunch, so we're waiting. I um, called the selling agent just to give him an update. Thank God he's a nice guy. Um, the only idea I have if we don't close today is that um, Monday, because... By God, they don't get this done today. Monday, we could potentially close first first thing in the morning, and then the sellers can push their closing back to later on, because I'm 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 sure that they need the funds from this sale to 
to, well, I don't know, but I'm assuming they do. They need the funds from this sale to close on their new house, y'all. Like everything. Eh. And then Jasmine, oh God, she's, she so deserves this house, man. Um, waiting for an email back from Ribbon to see if they are going to accept um, what is going on in her process, me and the lender. <laughs> the lender that I was not team anything, I was not liking him, but you, you now I now we got to sit here and brainstorm together how we're going to get this done and which is fine, you know. Um we're just we're trying to see. So the lender has sent Ribbon all the information that he has on their loan, um showing them that the loan has been approved. The only delay currently is is the 90 days it would take to get the student loans out of default, basically. I just, I'm like, sweet baby Jesus, please, Ribbon. Please, excuse me, please find a way. Um, I called mentor mommy, did my fake tears. <laughs> And she was like, well, maybe you might need to shop her loan again. Like, go go to some other lenders. And I am going to, I, I, I'm tired. This, this, this is the stuff that wears me out. Because <laughs> it, it all happens at once. Like, it all just, all of it. And then, and then these two, right? These, these two are my main focus right now. But then there's still Ronika, who we just signed the contract on earlier in the week. Um, things, things are not kosher over there either <laughs> right now. Like, it is not. So. Yeah. All right, y'all. It's 3.16 p.m. The file has finally, finally been sent to closing. Um, now it's in the closing queue to get funding executed. Um, Cameron, the lender, is saying he is trying to swap with other people to get the file at the top of the closing queue. I just went ahead and told Valerie, my transaction coordinator, to go ahead and do an amendment for Monday. I told y'all I spoke with the listing agent about pushing closing for Monday. We just closed early Monday morning and they close later on in the day. I mean, if it happens, it happens, right? At this point, I'm just like, if Brittany and her husband can still get to the title company and close and sign documents today, that would be great. I don't know if I'll be able to make it because I don't live on that side of town. <laughs> but it's not about me. Honestly, I that, that really doesn't matter. I just want to be able to close today. Um just so we don't have to drag this out over the weekend and into Monday. And, you know, it's just an inconvenience for everybody. You know, the listing agent was like, oh, well, we've already set up our paperwork for Monday. Now we'll have to redo everything for the time and blah, 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 blah. <sighs> yeah. 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 That's all I got, y'all. So I'll let y'all know. <laughs> I'll let y'all know. Closing's not happening today. Title and lender are emailing and sounding all chipper. Okay, we'll just close on Tuesday. <laughs> We're going to close Monday. And that's that. I've already had Brittany sign the amendment for extending it until Monday. And that that's that. Good morning. It is Saturday, November 6th, and I have been up just scrolling through my phone trying to find ways to save Jasmine's, trying to find ways to save Jasmine's deal. That's why I still look like this, excuse the look. Um, so, I don't know if I told y'all what happened, what's really going on, because so much was going on yesterday. Brittany still has not closed. We extended until Monday. 
So, yes. Um, that should be closing, though. It is just taking her. Oh, mommy's calling. Hold on. Okay, y'all. So, back to the situation. So, Jasmine is doing an FHA loan. She is the only person on the loan. Um, but because they're coming to Texas, they have to follow Texas requirements, laws, code, all of that, right? So, although her husband is not on the loan as far as his income is not being considered, but because they are married, and I, I'm not really sure if it's because Texas is a common law state or if it has something, it's another reason, but because they are married, his debt is still considered in the DTI, although we are not using him and his credit and his income on the actual loan. So there is a thing that the lenders run. It's called a CAVERS report, credit, some, some, it's, it's an acronym for something. Usually this is run in the beginning and they know about this in the beginning of the process. Even though he's not on the loan, he still should have ran his information and had this knowledge beforehand. So literally got through everything. Jasmine is wonderful. She she submits all her documents on time as soon as they ask for it, like does not drag her feet about anything. Um, you, you know, I've mentioned previously that this lender hasn't been the best with communication and so on and so on. But at the end of the day, he said that the loan was approved and um, we were just waiting for the appraisal, right, to come in, which we're still waiting on. So yesterday or the night before, um, he asked Jasmine to submit something for her husband. Long story short, yesterday, Friday, um, he says, he tells me his quality control department um, reviewed the file and saw that um, the husband's CAVERS report wasn't clear and he has student loan debt um, currently in default. Um, and I tell people this all the time. You can't buy a house with a government loan with student loans in default. You cannot. Conventional, we wouldn't possibly be able to because then he wouldn't be considered on um, in the debt and all of that if we could do it as conventional. But because it's FHA, a government-backed loan, so FHA, VA, and USDA, any three of those loans are all government-backed loans. So they are going. if you owe the government any money, they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. So the first option was to see if we could go conventional. Jasmine's current scores are not high enough to get a conventional loan. Most um, most lenders want to see about a 680 for a conventional loan. Her scores are not there, and it's not possible to get them there within a week or less or tomorrow. So my next step was... We called Ribbon Cash, which is a program that um, will step in basically and provide cash to purchase the home until you're able to get your loan closed. And you basically rent your home from them until you can close on your loan. So it helps with people that um, have a lower lower um, buying power like Brittany we were considering using it because she was at 200,000 when you present a cash offer it looks better to the clients and it's a guaranteed close for them that's what ribbon did does um, they also kind of do the same thing with situations like um, if you are a current seller also wanting to buy a house but it's contingent on the sale of your home they back that they say okay you know in the case that, you know, this contingency doesn't work out, they don't sell their home in enough time, we'll pay cash for the home and they get to take the home and then take that time to, they get to buy the new home, live in it and still have that time to sell their property. Um, so we were looking into doing this for Jasmine to see if Ribbon Cash would be able to purchase the home cash until she could get um, this settled. So... When they did reach out to the student loan department, um, when your loans are in default like this, um, 
usually what it takes is that you need to consolidate all of your loans and then the student loan, whoever holds your loans, are going to want to see you making on-time payments for a certain period of time. Usually it's about eight months where they want to see you've made payments on time until they um, update your student loan profile to no longer being in default and take you off of the, and then clear your CAVERS report. I know this personally because I went through this years ago when my student loans were in default. I was one of those people too that fresh out of college and was like, what's student loans? Um, and I've had multiple clients have to kind of take a seat, get their student loans right, and then months later come back and go through the process. Um, so, but with that, student loan people said the, the shortest amount of time they could possibly do is three months, 90 days. No seller is going to give us 90 days to get our stuff together. So when we told Ribbon Cash um, about the 90 day portion and basically that she's, that Ribbon Cash is looking at it as she is no longer approved for the loan. Because what happened is, is now that the student loans are in default and now that debt is counted towards um, Jasmine's DTI, student loans are usually counted um, as zero if it if you are like conventional and have um, and have like a a income driven repayment or something. Um, they'll either you know it's sometimes they can count like one percent. Zero, depending on what your income-driven repayment is. Um, but because these are in default, um, they're not in any, like, they're in default, right? So they're just in a negative status. They're not being paid. They're not income-driven. They're not in the income-driven repayment program. They're not in nothing. They're negative. Student loan people are saying, this is what default means. Y'all know what default means, but I'm going to break it down. Student loan people are saying, you took this money out. You have never paid it. You have never contacted us about making payments or saying that you can't make payments or telling us this is how much you can pay. So this is an, a a default balance, like right? Like when you don't pay your bills, it goes into default, right? Um, and it goes on your credit report. So because of that, so normally you would count 1% uh, as FHA. And if it was a certain, whatever the balance is, they would take 1%. Because it's in default, they take 5%. So now that 5% of the defaulted student loans are being counted towards her debt-to-income, that made her debt-to-income ratio more than what FHA allows. I think FHA's maximum debt-to-income um, is like 43% or something like that. So I don't know the exact numbers of what it did, but all I know is that it made it go up to where they can no longer um, approve this loan. So because of that, Ribbon Cash is saying, well, the only way that we can work with you is to know that this can be closed with the fix of smaller things or, you know, like, but you still have to be able to close on a loan. As of right now, they look at it as if she can't close on a loan and they are not, I guess, trusting of this 90 day period. And I mean, you have to respect people. <clears throat> you have to respect these programs and these companies and whatever their requirements are. So that is their requirement. So that's that was the goal yesterday, trying to get Ribbon Cash to take this on. Um, they they said no, and then the lender emailed back and gave them more information, and then we haven't heard from them, and we probably won't hear from them now until Monday. And this is the worst thing about weekends. You know, like as realtors and some lenders, um, I still work the weekends, like things are still getting done, but these other businesses that are attached to real estate transactions, like title companies, um, these programs, you know, they're closed on the weekend. So it's kind of like a dud. Um, so then I woke up this morning with it on my mind heavy and I'm just like, I got to save this. I haven't, and I'm not, I haven't, I've never experienced this before. Like, I've never had a loan bust. And that doesn't mean that I'm great. That just means the lenders that I've worked with have just been awesome. And they've been able to get loans closed. Um, this lender dropped the ball. And I'm not really one to place blame. But this time, 
I can without a doubt say this was the lender's fault. It is the lender's fault that this is happening. Whoever over there at this lender's company office, I don't know if it was him, the processor, the underwriter, whoever, but somebody, somebody over there missed the fact that Jasmine's husband student loans were in default and did not have a clear cavers and they knew that this was the FHA loan. Um, so I called my mom, send me some lenders that you know. I got on this Facebook group, the, those all those training classes that I'm always in. Um, we have a Facebook group where, you know, so I just, I put it out on there and said, help, who do y'all have that can possibly get this loan done? Um, I got about 10 different lenders and I was just calling them one by one and they were each telling me, no, 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 no. And then we got to this one lender <laughs> and it's, um, she's through Loan Depot. Um, and she, what she's basically saying is, so she asked me some qualifying questions, right? She said, okay, how much is the debt? The debt is too much for them to pay off. I'm not going to give all of Jasmine's business, but it's way too much money for them to pay off. Um, like anybody with student loans, hey, I got $34,000 worth of student loan debt. That's not getting paid. Uh, well, you know, I would not be able to currently pay that off in just one sitting to save a house if that was me. They're, so they can't pay theirs either, and I get it. Um, so she asked me that, and she said, okay, so they can't pay that off. No, they can't. So then her next question was, how long have they been married? And I'm like, I don't know. So I'm asking Jasmine, how long y'all been married? She says July of this year, July 2021, they got married. So that was after he acquired these student loans. So because they, I don't know if it has to do with the amount of time that they've been married or if they got married after he acquired the student loans I'm going to I'm going to find out more so I can tell y'all and so I can know just for my benefit and in the future. But the lender as soon as I told her July 21 2020 <clears throat> as soon as I told her July 2021, I was like, "Oh, that's just a couple months ago." Um she's like, "Oh, yes, awesome." And I was like, "Okay, what's awesome?" She was like, "Well, because um they just recently got married and he acquired this debt before they were married, the lender can now um have her attorney do a, she called it some letter, some letter of opinion or something, some type of letter to where they're, she's going to need the, their marriage license that shows their marriage date. The, the lender can have the attorney now write this letter, basically requesting that this debt is not counted towards Jasmine's debt to income. And she sounds very confident about this. So that is the route that we are currently going. Jasmine is um, doing the application with her right now. The lender said she's going to get started on ASAP today, Saturday, as soon as she gets into the office on Monday, submit it to the attorney um, and just pray to God that we can get this done. Yo, I want Jasmine in the house for the holidays, okay? <laughs> so that's where we're at with this now, y'all. Um, all right, now I got to go show houses to some more buyers. So let's go. Good morning, y'all. It is November 8th. Oh, today's my aunt's birthday. Monday, November 8th, 8.30 in the morning. I literally just walked back in the house from the gym, haven't even showered. And the new lender that I found to, God willing, close Jasmine's loan is on it this morning. She was ringing me, asking me questions and trying to get, um, just trying to get this loan done and I appreciate that. So even if even if this one does not go through, um, she will definitely be a lender that I will want to work with more in the future. Um, I, I love a lender that communicates, is on top of things, you know, has some urgency <laughs> in their workload. Um, other than that, we still need to close on Brittany today. Um, so I'm about to get in the shower, wash this funk off, and then get on the phone with um, Title 
for her to get this closing scheduled today. There should be no reason why we can't close on this property today. Like, I, I, I. Guess what happened today, y'all? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Lord. Still, it's 4.25 p.m. Monday, November 8th. And we still did not close on Brittany's house. You know, honestly, taking deep breaths in moments of anger, anxiety, tension, just that whole thing, like it, it's, it helps so much. Just It like pushes out that negative energy somehow, some way. Cause it's just been like bottled up in me all morning. Well, all day since I got that email. So this is how the day started off with Brittany's situation. I send the email around 8.45, 9 a.m. Hey, are we good to schedule closing? Because the last thing that I heard on Friday from the lender was that they should be they would be sending out at the latest Friday evening closing documents to title all of last week when I was trying to schedule closing this particular title company I don't like none of them no more none of them not the title not the lender I don't like them um, but this particular title company kept telling me they don't schedule closing without having closing paperwork. So I'm like, all right, fine. I'm gonna stop pressing for it because clearly y'all not gonna do it. They wouldn't let the seller schedule theirs and the seller needed to do, um, they needed to do a mobile closing with the notary and stuff because you know, whatever. So it's just been like inconvenient for everybody, but whatever, right? So this morning, you know, I'm expecting them to have received these documents Friday evening. And honestly, like although title companies are closed on the weekends, like the actual title company office itself, those escrow officers and whatnot and processors still be working because at least my preferred title companies <laughs> still normally work on the weekend. So, because I've received email from title companies and escrow officers and all kind of stuff on weekends when you don't think that they're working, but they are. So, I just went into it this morning thinking I was going to be able to hit them up and say, hey, let's schedule closing for whatever time today. Lo and behold, sent that email and she sends back, I still have not received closing disclosures from the lender horns <laughs> horns grew y'all because at this point i i have no understanding of why these documents have not been sent like completely just no knowledge of right just ugh. so i um I immediately text Cameron, who has been very nice, very, very nice. But I can tell, like, I think he's new in the industry. So, you know, a lot of his responses are, okay, I'm going to, let me check. Let me get right back to you, um, which is fine. If you don't know, you don't know, because I don't know everything. So if you don't know everything, you don't know. And he has been very responsive. I, I appreciated that. But this morning, I wasn't trying to hear it. Like, I was not trying to hear it, y'all. So, and then rem reminder, pause, just pause, right? Pause. Reminder, this contract has basically like two other parties outside of Brittany and the seller involved. So the person Brittany is buying her house from is also buying a house and that person is also buying a house. And these other two people are contingent on the sale and of the sale of the sale. So... <laughs> It wouldn't be, I mean, it wouldn't be horrible if it was just Brittany. It would still be bad. I would still be upset. 
but it's more upsetting because you now dropping the ball or whatever is taking y'all so long to get closing disclosures done is now interfering with three total parties, three families moving into their prospective homes or selling their prospective homes. And then there's one party. So the person Brittany is purchasing from, they are actually very nice, just really go with the flow. No problems with them, this whole transaction. Everything we asked for is for repairs. They did, you know, that just, ugh, sweet people, I'm assuming, right? Even their agent, like, some some real estate agents not like i say all lenders aren't made equal not all real estate agents are made equal either um but he has been great very understanding not snobby not rude not none of that you know just he's had days of frustration and i've had days of frustration with our files and outside of our files and we've just kind of kikied and laughed a few times on the phone like oh you know this job or whatever but it is the person that they are buying a house from who is like not not very cooperative you know so it's just frustrating that it's my lender that is causing these issues because it just makes you know like although clearly that's that's not my job but it's still like every it still just falls back it all just falls back on you know us over here so frustrating so anyways play so text cameron and i'm like why they don't have these closing disclosures like what is going on so then i send a mass email to every single person involved other than the other two sellers title company and all of their people all the way up to their president the lender and all of his people and all the way up to his president and the listing agent, you know, like everybody involved because I want to know why, why when you told me Friday noon that these closing disclosures would be to title by the end of the day, they are still not there on this lovely Monday morning when you had all weekend to type up whatever you needed to type up. Like why? <sighs> Hold on, deep breath again. <sighs> okay, and why? <laughs> it's almost five. Two days ago, it was Monday. Two days ago, it would have been 5.30 by now. Time change, so whatever. Um. So then I get a call from Cameron and his senior somebody, right? Some guy named John. And he's explaining to me in the most eloquent way possible. And I'm like, we all know how to be eloquent. But when I'm angry, I don't want to be that eloquent. So I'm over here, rat, tat, 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 tat. Not all the way, rat, tat, tat. Because you can't go all the way, rat, tat, tat, right? But I, I need you to receive a little bit of this rat, tat, tat, nice, nasty. Because I've been being real nice, just nice, nice the whole time. So... Um, so what he tells me is that the reason why it has been taking them so long to just get everything closed out on Brittany's loan was because her DTI was really close to being, it was, it was at the max that her DTI could be right debt to income. So long story short on Friday, they basically had to reshop, um, home insurance for her because the home insurance that was chosen and i guess after they plugged in all numbers her home insurance was putting her over her percentage of what her dti could be which nobody told me this on friday not that really i could necessarily do anything about that but it's nice to know what's actually going on what's causing the delays other than just saying okay we're working on it we're working on it what are what exactly are we working on like you've been working all week <laughs> so he told me that this morning i said okay so y'all got that figured out you know yes he's like okay so now you know it's 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 at our closer she's gonna send the file um uh, whatever 
So in about an hour after that, the file was finally sent and I had hope. Me and the listing agent, we were on the phone like, oh, never work with them again, but we have hope, right? Hope. Because it's really him getting the brunt of the other sellers, the one that he's buying the house, his clients are buying the house from. He's getting the brunt of that man's anger. And it's not like, in this issue, he's just like the middleman. So I'm like apologizing. I feel so bad. But, you know, he's he's understanding because he knows how it works. But, you know, you, 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 I'm just apologizing anyway. So, so I email title. Okay, bet. Y'all have the closing disclosures. Let's get on the books for today. Like, let's get on the books. They still don't want to get on the books. They say, well, the lender sent it to close tomorrow. And I'm like... This has to be a joke. Like, you know how some things are just, you just like in disbelief so much, all you can do is laugh. That's me all the time. Like when things just seem so far fetched, all I can just like, it's just comical at this point because what you mean the lender has Tuesday closing on there where when I know, I know you have received multiple emails today saying we need to close today. And on the closing documents you put tomorrow, so here I go, back with my nice nasty emails. We need this done today. Call Cameron, we need this done today. You know, he's gonna, so I'm gonna just read y'all verbatim the emails that um, was sent after that. Okay, so call Cameron back and um, get on the phone with Joey. I mean, J J John, John, his boss. So my email was, good morning. Can someone please let me know what the delay is in sending closing documents to title? We are all told best at best documents would have been sent by Friday. That was 10 o'clock this morning. John at 10.02. Hello, Denise, which is the closer on his lending team. Can you please send title Closing documents. Denise, Denise is finalizing initial documents for your review. We'll send them to you as soon as she's able. Denise at 1042. Thanks, John. Yes, I will send these documents shortly. Um, 1221, I received a text message from Cameron. Documents have been sent. I've got an email with documents. I text, I emailed Jessica at title. Have you received documents? If so, may we schedule now, Jessica emails back 1224. Yes, we received documents a few minutes ago, which her few minutes ago was actually an hour ago. They have closing date for tomorrow. Maria the closer will be working on the prelim Maria the closer will be working on the prelim CD shortly. What time for tomorrow would you like? We all want tomorrow. 1225. <laughs> a minute later, I respond. We need to close today. The amendment was for Monday, November 8th. So our original closing date was last week, Thursday, the 4th. Every day after that, we have literally amended for one more day, one more day, one more day with hopes of being able to close the next day. So Friday, we sent them an amendment for today, closing on today, right? And, and then Maria, who is the closer for the title. Per lender's instruct at 12.35, right? 10 minutes later. Per lender's instructions, we need to close tomorrow. At this time, we did not have the closing disclosure appro approved yet. I will let you know as soon as we balance. So what title and lender does, once title is done with their numbers and have closed out Brittany's loan and we're clear to close all of that, title and lender will go back and make sure all of their numbers match up, right? So that is what they're talking about, balance, right? 1256. Hi, Denise. This is from this is from title to lender. Hi, Denise. Everyone wants to close today. Is there a reason why we can't close today? Um now at 142, Joey, the listing agent for the sellers. Hello all. I'm not sure what's going on at Prime Lending, which is the lender, and he because he's blaming them for everything, which he's not wrong. But I'm being bombarded with phone calls and emails concerning this closing that should have happened in bold and uh capitalized print last Thursday. 
It is imperative that I get an update ASAP as more than two parties in this transaction are involved and it's causing a domino effect. Please advise, <laughs> right? So I'm here with Joey. I'm here for the energy because what is happening? What is happening? So then, um, Okay, so then 204. I call John after Joey says that. John at, at the John at the lender. Cause now I want I want to hear what's happening now. This morning at 10 o'clock, you told me as soon as she sent those documents, we would be good. I, I knew they would have to balance, but if the numbers are fine, you should just look, look, balance, boom. Let's go. This is now 204, right? John is responding to Joey. Hello, Joey. The ball is in the title company's court at this time. Once the CD is returned to us, we will send it back for final balancing. Jessica at title is asking, can we close today? And the answer is yes, if the CD is returned to us. So they just, they have to kind of go back and forth, just like one, two times. Good, 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 right? But then he says, but Maria, who is also at title, is saying no. So the title company, one person is saying, yes, we can close today. And then another person is saying, no, we cannot. So there's a confusion here. Maria Parada is saying, no, it can't close today and that you guys need to extend until tomorrow. So let us know what day the loan can close and return the CD. Documents will be released. That's at 204. At this, this time, I, I really gave up hope because title companies closed at 3 right? No funding and anything can be done past 5 p.m. Really like 4.45 is done. Like I, I had no more hope, but hmm, still holding on a little bit. And then Maria at 2.08 responds, closing instructions were, I'm a, I'm, closing instructions was sent to us today and we are working on CD. Then we will send for approval. I do not want to schedule no one until we have been approved CD. That is the part that's mind boggling to me. Because why not? At first it was you need initial CD. Now you want approved CD? Like why? Most title companies will let you go ahead and schedule once you get that clear to close and then initial CD. Why? Why Why are you being so stubborn? <sighs> so then that, that was, what time was that? That was at 2.08. So nobody has heard back since then. So I just went ahead and text Valerie, my transaction coordinator, to go ahead and amend for one more day for tomorrow. <sighs> okay, y'all. So that's that. That's why we have not closed on Brittany. That's what that is. Now, ooh, that was 20 minutes, y'all. So Jesus. I have, I don't even want to say convinced, but I have talked to Jasmine and I am asking her to put her trust in me that we are going to get this house closed. I talked to Kayla, the new lender, in detail to make sure that she can get this done and she feels very positive that she can get this done. We just need a little more time. So Jasmine went through, she's, she's really great. You know, gives all her documents as, you know, as soon as they're requested, all of that. So call Ken, the original lender this morning and say, hey, um, we tried to do the ribbon cash thing. Remember, I think I told y'all about that on Friday. That didn't work out because they were not confident in the Cavers report being cleared by the time that Jasmine would have to purchase the house back from them. Um, so I was like, all right, so now we're just going to have to move forward with this new lender. He kind of starts wanting to rebut and was like, no lender is going to be able to get this done. And I was like, all I need you to do is cooperate when Kayla emails and asks you for whatever information that you have for Jasmine. So he was just like, okay, you know, like real dry, like banging dishes in the background and everything, just rude. So, 
Um, so, you know, he sends the email that he needs to send. So we're still waiting on the appraisal. If the appraisal would have been in by now, things could have moved a lot faster. But because we're still waiting for the appraisal, and the appraisal isn't due until Thursday, um, the, the things that the first lender, Ken and his team, need to transfer can't be done until after that. That's, that's lender talk that kind of went over my head, but all I know is we have to wait for the appraisal to be in before he can transfer this other information that the new lender, Kayla, will need. Um, so I emailed Kayla today. I was like, okay, well, realistically, how long do you feel like it's going to take for us to close? Because now I need to send an amendment to the seller's listing agent, you know, in agreement of extending our closing date because we're supposed to be closing this Friday. That's not going to happen, point blank, period. So Kayla says the 30th, um, which like gives her two weeks, which isn't bad. You know, that's really not bad at all. And the only reason she needs that amount of time is because the week of Thanksgiving falls in between then, right? Um, and she can't guarantee that everybody's going to be working, you know, make, you know, holidays and blah, blah, blah. So she wants to give herself that extra cushion. But if we can get it done before then, then she will. So call Jasmine, told her that she's still a little worried just because now they're, they're still going to be leaving. leaving. <clears throat> she's still a little worried because now they're still going to be leaving Florida. But, um, I asked her to give us the time to get this closed instead of doing a rental property because honestly she's already put so much money into this property like so much money you know earnest money appraisal inspections i mean that's enough money that's over that's probably about four thousand dollars and if she's to walk away that's money she's gonna lose and we i i don't want that for her like i do not want that for her so and you know, y'all, I told her when she, when she first called me, she was the one that was like, oh, I worked with this agent, I worked with this agent, and nobody's working out. And I was like, girl, we're going to get your house. And I meant it. I meant it. So I want to be a woman of my word. <laughs> I know everything can't always work out, but by God, I want this to work out. So she's um, they're still coming out here. So they're either looking into a hotel or Airbnb. So that's going to be costly. A moving truck, you know, that's going to be costly. Extra funds that, you know, just weren't in the plan. So she's a little nervous, but I'm just like, you know, trust me. But also I told her just, you know, because I can say something and the lender do another doozy. So I said, you know, call the lender, you know, talk to her like you talked to me. Just really lay it out and ask her. Do you realistically think this will be done? Is, you know, what hiccups can we possibly run into? What can we, you know, what's going to be smooth? What is your true feeling about this? Because these are my funds and I don't want to waste any more time or money throughout this process, which is a very fair and valid feeling of hers. So she said, okay, she's going to do that. And I just really want her to do that so she can make the best decision for her and her family, even if that means she walks away. But at least I've tried to do everything that I can to, to save the deal. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at with those two. And it's a lot, but that's that y'all. I'm um, just 459 now. I'm going to drink the rest of my wine. And, um, uh, pray for a better day tomorrow.